The Consumer Electronics Show has officially begun in Las Vegas and we'll be bringing you all the highlights from right here in our regular studio where it's safe and clean and not a desert. I hate sand. The Wi-Fi Alliance announced that they have officially confirmed the Wi-Fi 7 standard and they've already started to certify devices to ensure they work together. Unlike me and Selena, that was never gonna last. The new standard will have twice the channel bandwidth of Wi-Fi 5, 6, and 6E, making it better for, surprise, surprise, high bandwidth streaming. The Alliance listed several use cases that will benefit from the improvements of the new standard, like hybrid work, mixed reality, and real thing they wrote that totally isn't boomer coded, electronic gaming. One of the biggest improvements introduced by Wi-Fi 7 is multi-link operation. Instead of connecting your device to just the 2.4 gigahertz band or just the five gigahertz or six gigahertz band, you can essentially connect to two or all three of them simultaneously. The connection will then default to whatever band is fastest. This should also reduce latency since having three bands available at the same time should reduce the queue on each of them. If that sounds exciting, you don't have to wait for Wi-Fi 7 devices. Qualcomm, for example, has announced several designs that use the standard and say they're fast Connect 7800 module already found in their Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and 3 chips are certified. Technically, Wi-Fi 7 routers came out months ago too. They just aren't certified. Unlike Selena. That's actually how we met. But I broke out. And we're happier for it. AMD has officially announced the RX 7600 XT, the first 16 gigabyte VRAM card under $500 this generation. That's important because 16 gigabytes is the minimum memory requirement for generative AI applications like Stable Diffusion. And that means for just $329, the MSRP of the 7600 XT, you can make an artist cry. Or at least you can once the card launches on the 24th of this month. Speaking of cards we already knew existed but are now officially announced, Nvidia was so excited to unveil the new 40 series super cards at CES, they only talked about AI for like 20 minutes first. Team Green confirmed the rumored prices we discussed last week and revealed release dates. The 4070 Super arrives January 17th for $600, followed by the 4070 Ti Super on the 24th for $800. The 4080 Super launches at the end of the month for a thousand bucks, $200 less than the 4080 non-Super. Nvidia took a lot of pride in comparing the cards to the previous generation. According to the company, when using DLSS 3, the 4080 Super is two times faster than a 3080 Ti. The 4070 Ti Super is 2.5 times faster than a 3070 Ti, and the 4070 Super is faster than a 3090. That sounds very cool, Nvidia. You know what sounds cooler though? Numbers. I've heard several mathematicians like them. AMD also unveiled their new 8000 G APU lineup during their CES keynote after they, like Nvidia, got all the AI out of their system. The company claims to have included some pretty potent graphics in the chips. The 8700G, top chip in the lineup, can allegedly reach 60 FPS playing Cyberpunk at 1080p and can also reach playable frame rates in many other games. At least, that's according to the company's gorgeous but information poor diagrams. They're like the himbos of graphs. AMD seems to be firmly targeting budget inclined gamers or anyone who wants to play something while they're saving up for a discrete GPU. But AMD wouldn't know much about discretion based on how much time they've dedicated to publicly tearing Intel's Meteor Lake apart. When they were done throwing Intel around, they threw everyone for a loop by announcing new Ryzen 5000 series processors, including the Ryzen 7 5700X3D. These sound like three generational chips, thanks to Team Red's dumb new numbering scheme. Your numbers sound very cool, AMD. You know what sounds cooler though? Meaningful numbers. See, it's called that. We're doing a thing. Now it's time for the quick bits, brought to you by Seasonic. They're back as our partner for CES this year, and what a wonderful partner they are. In fact, we might kiss them if it wasn't an electrical hazard. It's no secret we've stood by Seasonic's power supplies for a long time, and that's for a good reason. Their power supplies, such as the ones in their Focus series, for example, are fully modular, quiet, and are all backed by exceptional warranties. If you want your current computer, or your next build, to slurp up some reliable juice, check out Seasonic at the link below. Every year, thousands of quick bits are abandoned on our doorstep. For just the price of a cup of coffee, you can make a difference, please. Give generously. Here's five. Apple's Vision Pro will be available for pre-order on January 19th, starting at 5 a.m. to be picked up or delivered on February 2nd. It's all the excitement of a midnight release, except you still have to wait another two weeks to actually get your hands on the thing. Oh, I can't wait. Thus spoke Tim Cook, 
The era of spatial computing has arrived. <laughs> the optional vision correcting lens inserts range between $99 for reading lenses and $149 for prescription lenses, both only available online. The latter requires a valid prescription and according to a tiny footnote, not all prescriptions are supported. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but apparently the technology of the future is simply incompatible with certain kinds of eyeballs. Probably yours. Pay $3,500 to not see. LG showed off a transparent OLED TV this morning, a device that's kind of cool, but also kind of useless, which is what CS is really about. Unlike previous prototypes, the company has shown the LG signature OLED T for transparent, uh, also pronounced Olé in French, is uh, pretty much a final product that is planned to launch this year. It has a space behind its 77 inch display where you can place objects in order to prompt reactions like, huh, that's cool I guess. Or you can raise the contrast filter to eliminate transparency, making it seem like you had bought a normal TV like a poor person <laughs> who would use that. Apple has begun paying out a $500 million settlement to a class action lawsuit claiming that the company intentionally throttled the performance of older iPhone models. You remember in 2017 when Apple admitted to slowing the batteries on older phone models, which they stated was intended to improve the device's longevity, right? Apple agreed to the settlement back in 2020, but the company maintains there was no wrongdoing on their part. The payment to each member of the suit will be worth around $92. So good news if you had an iPhone with terrible battery life eight years ago, I guess. I mean, with inflation. Put that in the bank and then save up to buy your mom an iPhone. Or a replacement left AirPod. BMW unveiled new updates to their cars, including multiple video gaming features. <laughs> yes. While you can already play games in the company's cars, BMW is making that experience better by adding the ability to connect Bluetooth controllers so you can play split screen games in your expensive German car with your friends and Hall Effect joysticks. Finally, BMW drivers will more easily be able to unwind after many stressful hours of not using turn signals. And tech company and Bear Grylls fortune telling cousin, Sear Grylls <laughs> unveiled an AI powered grill at CES. The device costs $3,500, but if you Act now, you can get $1,000 off if you pre-order this unproven machine before January 15th. What this a steal! Sounding a lot like the Vision Pro. Sear Grills claims the grill can cook a one inch ribeye steak in fewer than two minutes. Their secret, AI. The second secret, trapping the meat in a vertical cage and blasting both sides simultaneously with temperatures over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It also makes pizza. Yum, yum. And you'll be a real pizza work if you don't come back on Wednesday for more tech news. I'm kidding. You know I can't stop a loving you. Is that Chris Pratt?